Thanks very much, Daryl. And um, the key question, you know, Australia's biosecurity system, are we ready for the future? Um, and to start with answering that question, clearly managing our biosecurity risks not only helps to keep out exotic pests and diseases, but it also reduces the impact should they enter Australia. And ensuring that um, goods being imported meet Australia's very high biosecurity um, standard protects the productivity of our agriculture sector, uh, flow ons to our communities, protects our environment and our economy more broadly. For the Australian economy, good biosecurity means an increased likelihood of sustained domestic production and international exports leading to competitive and profitable agricultural sector. And so biosecurity is largely about managing that risk, managing a risk while still continuing to engage in important trade. Significantly in terms of the future, there's a, a very significant shift in global demand. There's growing passenger numbers, growing trade volumes, increasing exports from a growing number of countries seeking access to Australian markets, and new air and sea craft and technology that are contributing to challenging our current state of our biosecurity system. Just a few bits of data in terms of the work that we do in biosecurity. Um, for example, in the past financial year, nearly 18 million passengers passed through our international airports. There was 1.7 million consignments of goods that arrived by sea, with, uh, one th with 140,000 of those being physically either inspected or treated or re-exported or, or destroyed by our biosecurity people as a result of some potential biosecurity risk or concern. There were 30 million non-commercial consignments of goods that arrived by air, and of those, 160,000 required some form of intervention by our biosecurity staff. So managing the risks imposed by this volume of movement requires a strong, flexible and responsive biosecurity system. And that's part of that system is definitely a shared responsibility. It's uh, not the Commonwealth alone that's involved in the biosecurity system. It's shared across governments at the federal and the state levels and shared between governments and industry and also the community more broadly. So in response to these changing trends and these increasing challenges, um, the department is progressing four important initiatives that will ensure Australia's biosecurity system is ready for the future and able to respond to the changes. These, um, these four areas of biosecurity initiatives are firstly a rewrite of the Biosecurity Act um, and the implementation of our new legislation. And our new legislation comes into effect mid this year, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, enhancing our biosecurity surveillance and analytics capability, which was an opportunity that's come out of the agriculture white paper that the Deputy Prime Minister spoke a bit about this morning. Um, thirdly, reforms to our export legislation. And lastly, a review of our intergovernmental agreement on biosecurity. And it's basically, for those who don't get involved in gov the government world, it's the agreement between the Commonwealth and the state and territory governments that outlines who's responsible for what uh, and who administers what roles and responsibilities and how we interact. So just going through those four areas as an example of some of the important initiatives that we're undertaking in biosecurity. Firstly, the new Biosecurity Act. It's the Biosecurity Act of 2015, and it commences on the 16th of June this year. So 16 June 2016 has a certain symmetry to it. That's the implementation date for our new biosecurity legislation. And what that legislation does is it produces a much more modern legislative framework that's flexible so that we can respond to those types of future challenges that I outlined earlier and places us in a much better position to manage our biosecurity risk environment. It's an absolute complete rewrite. So the old act goes and it's replaced by a brand new act that's actually um, all in one place until there are changes to it. And it is actually a very readable piece of legislation. 
This Biosecurity Act replaces the old Quarantine Act of 1908, which is the one we're currently operating on and under. Um, and in 1908, things were quite a bit different. For example, in 1908, you know, there were 5,000 miles of Australian coastline that remain uncharted. And the sort of diseases that we were concerned about were the bubonic plague, leprosy, and uh, smallpox. And goods only in people only ever arrived um, by sea. So clearly there's a lot of changes between the um, Quarantine Act of 1908 and a current contemporary world in which we live, and modernising our legislation will equip us much better to be able to manage um, those sorts of risks that we now face in a more modern world. There's been plenty of consultation through the development of the legislation. Um, it's been some four years during the development and its passage, so there's been plenty of consultation with industry, with agricultural stakeholders, state and territory and governments, environmental groups, health professionals and trading partners, and also the general public. So what does the new legislation do? Um, it certainly reduces the complexity, where you actually have a readable act that you can pick up and read. Um, and it also is much easier for our stakeholders to understand what their obligations are, and therefore much easier for them to comply. It introduces a range of new powers, um, and these powers help us to address onshore biosecurity risks, but will also provide us with um, powers to manage domestic ballast water for the first time, recognising our seas as a significant potential biosecurity risk for us. It provides for a greater range and differentiation of penalties under the legislation so that those penalties are much more proportionate to um, the type of compliance activity that, uh, that's required. So there's a much greater range of penalties for people who don't comply. And it also provides us with a uh, new opportunity to assess someone as a fit and proper person so that we now have a, a test to determine what sort of people will be um, authorised officers who will help us undertake biosecurity management activities on behalf of the Commonwealth under this new legislation. And lastly, um, it provides a real opportunity for us to reduce the regulatory burden for compliant businesses and people and to recognise um, businesses that are compliant and have good biosecurity practices in place and reduce the red tape and our interaction and involvement with them and place um, our attention on those areas of higher or greater risk. The department's well underway in uh, doing what needs to happen to be ready for the commencement of the new legislation on 16 June. Um, we've spoken to quite a large number of organisations and we're going to be undertaking a roadshow soon um, to all industry bodies to tell them what the changes are and how they can comply. Importantly, we've released most of the draft regulations, the regulations as the detail underneath the legislation. We've released the draft regulations for comment, and those um, regulations and the determinations that go with them are available and open for comment until the 24th of this month, so just before Easter. Um, if you haven't had a look, you can have a look on our website and have a look at those regulations and determinations to see how they affect you, and you can express a view or an opinion um, about those regulations as they are in draft. Um, the next area I wanted to touch on was the Agricultural Competitiveness White Paper. And um, the government, as part of the Ag Agricultural Competitiveness White Paper, has committed $200 million to improve biosecurity surveillance and analytics. And this investment will be used to strengthen our surveillance and to build community-based engagement, to grow our scientific capability and to enhance the collection and analysis of information. So strengthening our surveillance activities will help us identify uh, and protect industries and the environment and communities from high priority pests and diseases. And it'll help us to try to prevent risks that might enter particularly through Northern Australia, um, through its increased development, and to try to stop the spread of, of diseases and pests from ser seriously affecting other parts of Southern Australia. It'll also help us to more comprehensively understand pest and, pest and disease prevalence um, and our freedom status, and to more comprehensively document where we're free from what, 
and where we have concerns in terms of our pest and disease status. Um, we'll also be under that um, white paper initiative money uh, helping to promote on-farm biosecurity protocols, which are fundamentally important in today's modern supply chain of preventing um, biosecurity pests and diseases. So we go to increase our scientific capability to ensure that the department has the access to the most up-to-date information and technology to make informed decisions, and importantly, things like the bill review from 2008 um, outlined that our biosecurity decisions should be absolutely sort of science-based. So ensuring that we've got the right equipment and technology to undertake those science-based uh, decisions will be an important part of the white paper work that we'll be undertaking. We're also going to be um, developing our analytics and information technology capability so that we'll have the tools and skills to convert information into intelligence and to increase the visibility of changes to pest and disease status for Australia and to keep a an, an watchful eye on global trends um, with pest and disease incursion to inform us about future biosecurity risks before they turn up on our shores. The area of export reform, our department's also undertaking a, and leading the reform for Australia's agricultural export legislation, which again is another, well, it's a range of number of pieces of legislation. It's not in one place, and the aim is to get the export legislation in one place in the form of a readable act, much like the Biosecurity Act. And the aim is to, to provide a much more modern and flexible act so that exporters um, can retain and secure increased overseas markets. It'll make the rules for exporting simpler, easier to understand, and more able to be complied with. Um, and it'll also help remove, I think, some of those unintended barriers to, to trade. Um, the proposed work of the export legislation follows a very significant review done last year in 2015, a review of all of the existing laws, um, and there was plenty of consultation as part of that review, which determined that really we could do with a much more updated piece of more modern legislation while still retaining um, our ability to deliver quality assurance processes for export. So this um, export reform work will be a pretty significant exercise for our department after we've implemented the Biosecurity Act changes. And it will take some years to roll out. I mean, the drafting of the legislation is underway now, but it will take some years um, to roll out and there will be an enormous amount of consultation as part of that export legislation reform. Lastly, I wanted to briefly touch on the Intergovernmental Agreement on Biosecurity. And as I mentioned, that's an agreement between the Commonwealth Government and all of the state governments, with the exception of Tasmania, who uh, didn't sign it, that identifies the roles and responsibilities. So which things are state responsibilities, which things are Commonwealth responsibilities, and areas that we ought to collaborate. The agreement first came into place in 2012, and again, it was one of the findings of the Beale Review Report from 2008 that suggested we need a formalised agreement between Commonwealth and states on who was doing what um, in biosecurity and how we should collaborate and work together. There's been a number of significant achievements under the um, current agreement. Firstly, it's the first of the biosecurity agreements between Commonwealth and state. But also importantly, it's done a, a couple of important things, um, like setting out a national response agreement for environmental pests and diseases that includes cost sharing arrangements for responses on any biosecurity incidents. And it also set up a, a national policy approach to identifying and managing pests and diseases that were of national significance. Typically in the past, we looked at things that were of regional and state significance, but this allowed us to get agreement on what were um, pests and diseases of national significance and how we should deal with them. So to ensure that um, the agreement remains effective, um, ministers have asked that we review that agreement during this calendar year and that we report back to them at the end of 2016 
um, with our findings in terms of what might need to change to underpin a new agreement between, or a revised agreement between Commonwealth and states to operate our biosecurity system. So these initiatives that I've touched on, these initiatives that I've touched on are a high priority for the department and the Australian government. And we look forward to continuing to engage with everybody and relevant stakeholders on their su successful implementation. Um, and continued engagement we see is absolutely vital to continuing our biosecurity system. Just a moment's reflection on the start of this discussion and presentation, which was talking about our future. Well, certainly biosecurity, being sort of free from pests and diseases and managing them, is absolutely part of our future. And in a world where we can't really compete as effectively as we might like, perhaps on things like price and volume, we can compete, and our significant market advantage is about quality, which increasingly means more than sort of freshness and taste. It means being able to establish the provenance of your product and indeed all of the things that went into manufacturing or creating or growing your product. And in answer to the question, are we ready? Um, I think the answer is that we're better positioned as a result of those initiatives that I've been through, those four initiatives. But um, it is absolutely a moving target. We're certainly an organisation and biosecurity has been uh, the subject of many reviews, which is a healthy thing in terms of making sure that you don't stand still, because standing still just means you're actually going backwards. So um, the assessment there in terms of our future, it is a changing world. It's changed quite a lot. We've got those four things underway to be much more contemporary in our management of biosecurity for the future, to position us better. But it is a moving target, and we need to stay vigilant in terms of are we ready. Thank you.